Hello everyone, this is Sajid Parid from IHG Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I'm going to explain the second exercise which I have provided to you. The name of the script is GE underscore exercise 2 here. And in this exercise, what we will do is we will map or we will extract water surface area from Landsat imagery for the year 2019. This is again another demonstration of what Google Earth Engine can do uh, quickly over your study area. So like the earlier videos, scripts, we are again using the Miandop scheme in Iran. And as a first step, I'm importing the scheme boundary as a variable called boundary here. And the importing is done from assets, as I have explained in my earlier videos. You can add your own boundary here, your own boundary of your study area. Give the same variable name. The script should work in your study area. So the first step is to zoom to your study area with this line of code, map.center object. So here it says, uh, zoom to the object boundary with a zoom level of 8. The next batch of script is uh, this function. And this function is to mask out the cloud pixels from Landsat 8 images. Landsat 8 SR, surface reflectance images. And uh, applying this function will uh, remove the cloud pixels based on the quality assessment band provided with Landsat 8. You can use this function as such in your other scripts to mask out uh, Landsat 8 clouds. Now in the next step, uh, you please read these comments to know what we are doing in the uh, accompanying code. So here, I'm calling a image collection into a variable called img1, which is Landsat 8 T1 surface reflectance data. So if you want to know more about this data, you can copy this and paste it here to search. And it will give you the details or the link to the details of this particular data set and you can see that this data set is Landsat 8 surface reflectance tier 1. You can use this icon to go to the website and read the details which are the bands available. The pixel underscore QA is what we use to mask out clouds etc. And it will also give you a demo uh, code to read this data set. So here I'm filtering, I'm calling all Landsat 8 data for my study area boundary between February 2019 and May 2019. Four months. So here you can filter with date. I'm also filtering using the bounds of bounding box of boundary. So I don't give any path and row. You can also give path and row. There is a um, function so if you want to know more about dot filter and what are the um, filtering options available you can just go to docs and type in filter and here you will see all the available filters available greater than equal to um, so depending on your aim of the script your objective you can decide which filter you want to use. You can see that the date is what we have used here. Um, these are in dot filter. Then in image collection, there must be another set of filters which are available here. So for example, filter bounds is there. So this is how you will find uh, different functions available and details about different functions. So here I'm filtering all the Landsat images available over the study area bound. 
and with this line dot map mask elite sr which is a function here define we are applying this function to all this image collection between these two dates and mask out all the clothes and to simplify this uh, script i am applying a median filter again so it will calculate the median of each band so the result is one land set uh, one set of lands at eight image with 11 bands so all the bands represents median of uh, all the individual bands between these dates in this set i am setting uh, a visualization for false color composite to visualize the img1 in false color composite in this line i am adding that img1 using the visualization parameter palette with l8 and adding the layer so when we run it it will appear in the map view before we compute the ndvi from this image the median image i'm setting here a ndvi visualization parameter you can see it's it's easy to understand the minimum value is zero to one you can also set it like minus one to one change the minimum uh, the palette colors range from it's a gradient from white to green now let us compute NDVI. To compute NDVI in Google Earth Engine, uh, you can use arithmetic, and, uh, band arithmetic also. That is also a possibility. But there is a standard uh, function available which is called normalized difference. So I'm using normalized difference on IMG1 using the bands B5 and B4, which is the NIR band and red band. And I'm renaming the band name into NDVI. So you can see that multiple functions are, are uh, clubbed into one line. Now I'm here, I also want to use temperature. So uh, in this script, I want to use both NDVI and temperature and apply some threshold to see if I can extract water pixels. So before extracting the temperature band, I am setting a visualization palette for temperature. And here we assume, or here we take the band 10 as um, the surface temperature, which is the thermal band. And here you can see I'm setting a palette to white to red and setting a minimum and maximum value. So this you can configure based on your study area. Now in this line, I'm converting the temperature because the temperature or the thermal bands which you get from uh, Landsat 8 uh, is in Kelvin. And in this product, if you check the uh, data details in Google Earth Engine page, you can see that for band 10, there is a scale of 0.1. So here I'm applying that scale. So to apply that scale to a particular band, you can IMG1, which is your variable, the median here. Dot select that particular band, dot multiply, so it will multiply 0.1 to this particular band. And I'm subtracting 273.15 to this uh, to convert from Kelvin to degree Celsius. Now I'm applying the thresholds to both NDV and temperature to get a water mask. So now let us assume that any NDVI values, any pixels with the NDVI values less than 0.1 and temperature less than 20 are water pixels. And these are arbitrary thresholds. Okay, so this is just to demonstrate uh, how these things work. If you want to uh, put uh, a threshold saying temperature greater than 20, then you just have to say GT, GT is the function for that. But let's uh, stick to LT less than 20. And depending on your steady area, you may have to customize these values here. And please note the AND function. That means only those pixels 
which meet the condition, the NDVI condition and the temperature condition. Both of them are selected. Now print function will print all the details about this particular image. Here in this line, we'll set all the zeros. Uh, so, so what happens here is all the pixels which meet the thresholds will be converted to one and all the other pixels will be converted to zero. So it creates a binary image with zero and one. Now we don't need zero because zeros are values. So we need no data there. So to update all the zeros to no data, there is a function called update mask. So if you put your mask like this in this function, using this function, it will convert all the zeros to no data. Now I want to visualize some layers. So I'm adding layer map.add layer in DVI. Here you can see that I have I am um, clubbing a function, clipping function, because I want to visualize both NDVI and temperature clipped to my boundary. It is again to demonstrate the function clip. We can use clip elsewhere as well in the beginning of the script. And I want to uh, Visualize NDVI using the palette with NDVI and with temp, which are defined earlier. I'm setting false here because that means it will not be selected by default when it appears here in the map. And I'm also visualizing the water mask. So please note that I'm not applying clip here because I want to see how much area is covered. Now, this set of uh, code will export the water mask image to GeoTIFF and it will be saved into your drive, into your Google Drive. So you need a Google Drive access. Um, after that, I want to compute the area of water mask or water bodies, the total area. And this batch of code is exactly doing that. Please. Uh, see the documentation to find out what each function so you can see I'm clubbing different functions here image dot pixel area dot reduce the region so reduce region means aggregation uh, the aggregation used here is the sum because we want to know the sum of all the pixels uh, that will give us the area in square meters the scale is 30 uh, which represents the resolution of the data because Landsat is 30 meters I put the scale here and the maximum pixel I put some very high numbers one followed by nine zeros uh, yeah because I may want to run it over a big area and this line will print the area of water body. Uh, it is also possible to print or display the histogram of your image data and uh, to do that we have chart functions and in that chart functions we have image.histogram so here you can see that um, uh, setting histograms of temperature and ndvi here it will appear in console um, and you can use this histogram to set your thresholds uh, in this particular line so that's it uh, let's see what happens when we run this it's very quick so you can see that this is the landsat 8 image the median image and i have printed the median image here so you can see that it has all the bands which should be available in one particular landsat 8 image but each band for example, B1 is median of all the B1 in all the Landsat 8 images between February and May. Now, this, I think it's NDVI. So it depends on what all you have printed. The area is printed here. You can see that the area is around 19 square kilometer. Yeah. But I think this 19 square kilometer is quite low because uh, in the area function, we have limited the area calculation to boundary. So it limited to uh, the boundary here. The, the boundary is not displayed, but here is the Uh You can see histogram of uh, B10, which is the temperature. You can see histogram of NDVI here, and you can see in yellow the water mask. 
and also the temperature uh, layer and NDVI. Uh, the water mask is quite uh, it it's quite it shows a lot of pixels one reason is because uh, during this season there's a lot of snow the, all the white parts are snow so that is why uh, yeah it's actually a water and snow mask but you can adapt your thresholds elsewhere uh, in your study area and try to get water pixels along and in the task, it appears orange here. That means there is some new task there. And you can see that a water mask image is ready to run and download. You can click on run to download that image into your Google Drive, uh, which will be a GeoTIFF image, which you can later open in QGIS and do further analysis if you want. So that's it, uh, details about the second script. Thank you.